Welcome to DIYPhotobits.com and this video about version 3 of Camera Control. If you start the script without the camera connected, you'll get this message here, no camera detected. So at this point you can turn on your camera. It will take a few moments for Windows to recognize that a new camera is connected and you'll get the little Windows dialog box pop up. It's important that you cancel this box because while this is open, the Windows is busy talking to the camera and my script cannot talk to it. But once you click cancels here, the device is available. So at this point we'll select the camera. Um, I only have one camera device plugged in at the moment, a D300, and so that is going to be automatically connected. If you have multiple cameras connected, of course, you'll get a choice at this point. Now we can select the folder in which files which are downloaded from the camera are saved. We can browse to a different folder and um, select that one. Whatever folder you choose will be remembered. So the next time you run DIYPhotobits.com camera control 3.0, it is going to remember that folder. That was one of the big requests that was made because it was very inconvenient, of course, having to, uh, to select your folder each time. New in this version is the file name prefix. Anything you type here is going to be placed at the beginning of the file name when the files are downloaded. So that's going to make it easy. For example, when you're shooting a group of people, you can say, you know, hello, what's your name? Your name's George. Okay, and we type in George here, and then we shoot a few frames, and the files become George space DSC 1234.jpg or whatever. And then, hello, what's your name? Your name's James. Okay, when we type in James, and then the next set of files will have that in the file name. So this will make it very easy to work out which file belongs to which person. So I'm just going to write demo here because we're making some demo files that are going to be in the C tethered folder. These controls here are pretty standard. You should understand what these mean. They are better explained in the previous video. So I'm not going to go over them in any detail here because I did that in the last video. And also they haven't changed since the previous version of the script. The shutter release button also I explained quite well, um, I think, but you will find it's pretty straightforward to use. Choose RAW, choose JPEG, hit the shutter release button and a picture will be taken. It may be downloaded immediately if you click here, or if you don't click, then it's just taken and saved on the memory card. Photographs taken with a script are saved on the memory card anyway, regardless of whether you, you click this, but it's optional whether you want to download it immediately to the PC. And there's a nice out of focus image of my keyboard, uh, spare keyboard actually. Okay, so these parts have been explained in the previous version, so I'm only going, previous uh, video, so I'm only going over them briefly here. If you want to know more about how to use these parts of the script, please go back to the prior video. Now on to uh, things I didn't explain or things that are new. This portion that we already explained is really for when you are using the computer to control your shooting. But if you're standing up holding the camera in your hand and shooting a model or shooting an event, of course you want to use the shutter release on the camera and the controls on the camera. But if you still want to download the images immediately, you need to use this option, Start Tether. Once I click the Start Tether button, any new image that is created on the camera by manually pressing the shutter release button on the camera causes it to be downloaded. So I'm going to focus here on this uh, piece of messy desk that I've got and I'm going to press the shutter release and the image is downloaded. Now at the moment my camera is set to take RAWs so the RAW was downloaded and I can't preview the RAW in this script. If you want to preview the RAWs you'll want to use some other software. I would be normally using Bridge to do that. Okay, over here in Bridge, you can see the images that have just been taken. And as you can see, the file names have the word demo at the beginning of them. So two ways to use the script. One, control it from the computer with this section. Secondly, use it, your camera normally, pressing the shutter release and controlling from the, the uh, camera, but getting the, the images downloaded here and then it's up to you to view it in your viewing program of choice. Uh, if you use Bridge um, or similar software, then this button here will probably work for you and cause 
viewing software to highlight the most recent uh, most recent image. Let's take an example over here. I'm going to make the preview nice and big. I'm going to point the camera at the screen, take another shot. The shot will be downloaded. You can see the new file appear here in Bridge and a second later it will be highlighted. Okay, now for the piece you've all been waiting for. One of the most requested features was time lapse and I had lots of nice cunning ideas about how to do interesting things with time lapse that unfortunately I've not really had time to do. So I have done instead a basic time lapse and perhaps when I played with that a bit and some of you have played with it as well and made some more suggestions, then we can add some additional features. At the moment, it basically takes a certain number of shots after every so many numbers of seconds. So for example, the default is to take one shot every four seconds. Let's change that now to um, one second to make this a faster demonstration. And I'm going to change my camera settings to a, a basic JPEG to make it a little bit faster to, to see what's happening. Now, as you can tell, this is actually slightly slower than once a second because it's taking a shot, downloading it, and then waiting once a second, one second. So it would obviously be um, better if it, if you used it for a longer period. And I think for most time lapse, we're probably talking at sort of once a minute, in which case the odd second here variation won't make a difference. Or if you're really concerned about making sure it's actually once a second, then the way to do that would be to not try and download the images. So if I if I stop the tethering and just let the time lapse happen then it will be much faster so if I set up a time lapse demo here I'll put time lapse demo as the file name prefix just so we can see which files it is easily I'll set it to one second one shot just to um, make it a fast demo and I'm not going to tether it because if I tether it there'll be too much time wasted downloading the image and so we won't really get the speed that we asked for. So from the shutter releases you can hear that it is time lapsing and we have a count here of the shots taken. Let's look at a variation of that. Let's say every two seconds we take two shots. And so on. Obviously you can have much larger intervals than that. And for a you know, time lapse video of the sunset or whatever, you might be having a shot every 10 seconds or whatever. Taking multiple shots with each one would allow you to, to you know, edit away if you by chance had a shot ruined by you know, a bird flying in front of your, your camera or something. So there we go, that's uh, a very basic time lapse. Um, if you want to download interactively, then you really want to have a larger frequency. Say, let's go for four seconds and one shot each time. I'll start the tether first and then I'll start the time lapse and then we'll be able to see the shots come in as the um, as they're taken viewing them in bridge so over here I'll wait for four seconds since I pressed that button the accuracy is, is to approximately to half a second so this is not not appropriate for very precise work but it's good enough for most uh, most casual use so that's one shot taken and then we're going to wait four seconds and we should see another shot taken. There's the shot being taken. It's downloaded and appears in Bridge. So there you go. That's DIYphotobits.com camera control 3.0 with time lapse. I hope you find that useful and I hope you have some suggestions for me. 
So I'd also like to take this moment to say thank you to everybody who has um, told others about the script, posted in forums or posted blog posts on their blogs about it. It's great to get the word out there. I really much, really do appreciate that because, you know, it's no fun doing this kind of thing if nobody uses it or nobody sees it. And it's great to get some feedback to see how people are using it. So thank you very much for that. And if you find any other opportunity to let your friends or, or your readers know about it, I would be really most appreciative. That's all for now and see you next time.